Hey guys, how are you? Welcome to today's video. I have a speed review of new products that I've been trying. I have them all on my face today. I will have demos. I will have some swatches, but I want to really share with you guys at least two faces worth of products that I've been testing out. So if you like these kind of videos, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and we're just going to get right into it. I am super excited, a lot of good stuff and some not so good stuff. So let's get right in. I decided to put my hair back because it is hot AF today in Pennsylvania and I need some air on my neck. The first thing I always put on usually is primer and I have been loving this Vanish primer from Hourglass. This is their newest one. They do have the Veil primer as well, which has an SPF in it. This one does not have an SPF in it. It's very smoothing, very pore refining, very comfortable, and it doesn't feel as slippy or silicone-y as the original. I also really love this whole like gold vibe that they're bringing in. Me personally, I am a fan of gold. I love anything gold, so. This is just really pretty and I really like how it looks on the skin. Now, moving along to foundation. Mm. I'm sure all of you have either tried or heard about the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. I have the shade 2 Neutral. This is more of a medium coverage, natural, slightly radiant foundation. This is somewhat similar to the Light Wonder Foundation in my opinion, but this one to me is a little less warm toned than that one and it also just has a little bit less coverage than that one. I'm wearing it on this side of my face and I have to say, I like how it looks, but I did not like how it applied. It was just very kind of hard to build up and it really didn't layer well. I noticed in the areas that I layered it, it kind of patched up a little bit like under the eye area here and a little bit over on this discoloration. It just was a little patchy, but the coverage that it gives is really pretty. So I'm sort of impressed by it, but not sold on it yet, if that makes sense. I would say that the next foundation I'm going to show you, I much prefer um, over this one. The next foundation, which I'm wearing on this side of my face, and I actually have to say overall, I enjoy how this side looks compared to this side, but we will, we'll, get into that as we keep going. So I am wearing the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation on this side of my face. I have the shade Mont Blanc, which is Light 2 or L2. The packaging is so pretty on this. I love the simplicity of NARS packaging. You got the matte black cap. Of course, you have a pump and mine kind of got everywhere. I'm a little messy when I apply makeup. It is what it is. I like that it's a shorter, kind of more rectangular bottle compared to the taller rectangular bottle. It might be a little easier to store in a drawer system, perhaps. The finish is more of a natural finish. It's more of a medium coverage as well. And as you can see, I do think it lives up to its medium coverage name or description. I was able to build it up, especially in, once again, the discoloration in my cheeks. It really didn't bunch up or crease or smudge or any of that. It just really applied smoothly, evenly, and it was very comfortable to wear. I have to say, I do feel the Charlotte Tilbury one on my face more so than the NARS. And it's interesting because NARS has more coverage. So take that for what it is, but I personally, at this moment in time, would say that the NARS is a better hit than the Charlotte Tilbury. Now we're gonna get into concealer, and this is where things get a little bit south for me. So we're going to start with the Say Hydra Beam Concealer. I have the shade 1 and this is what it looks like. The component is really pretty. I like it. This is what the applicator looks like. It's a really nice sort of triangular applicator with a slight curve. I don't know if you can see that. Slight curve on the top which makes it really nice for hugging around your eye area. This did not apply nicely and it doesn't wear well. And the coloring is weird. I really wanted to love this because I love so many other things from Say. I love basically everything else. That's why I thought this was going to be amazing, but it just didn't work, you guys. It didn't work. It really left, I have it on this side of my face, it really left 
I don't know if you can see, patchiness, and it just did not apply well at all. It was just so smeared, and it was kind of coming off, and it wasn't laying flat on my skin or blending in at all. It just sat on top, and then even at that, it kind of smudged around. So I don't like this concealer. I'm Unfortunately, it's just not a hit for me. A concealer that I think I like, I'm still testing, but so far, I think I'm enjoying it. It's the Lawless Conceal the Deal Concealer. This is a long-wearing, skin-nourishing, clean brand. I have the shade Cream Puff, which is, I think, one of the lightest. And this is what the applicator looks like. So this is, again, more of a just straight-edge applicator, but it really feels nice. It's super smooth on the under eye. It applied nicely. It blended really nice. The undertone and the coloring wasn't weird. I find with the Say, this runs kind of pink. I know it's supposed to sort of brighten and correct and hydrate, but it didn't feel hydrating. It actually kind of burned when I applied it. And the pinkness of it just doesn't really sit well with my skin tone. But with Lawless, I think because it's a little more of a yellow undertone, it works a little bit better. It really applied better and it wears better. Okay, you guys, so the under eye setting powder, I have two, these are the newest releases. I actually picked these up because of Patty Alonzo here on YouTube. She raved about these and said how amazing they are. So I went shopping right after that. Let's start with the Jaclyn powder. This is the, what's it called? Powder Move Loose Setting Powder in the shade Sheer Fair. Packaging, cute, very solid. I love the white. I love that she um, collabed with her mom and she wrote that on there. I love that it's got a sifter, but it doesn't just pour out everywhere. It's actually a very controlled sifter somehow, even though it looks like just your average sifter. I don't know how she did it, but it works. And not a whole lot of product dumps out. Now, when I applied this, I used a fluffy brush. I used it on this eye, and I think that it did a nice job. It definitely blurred. It would cling to certain parts of my concealer. So, I like that it blurred certain areas, but the fact that it clung to other areas, I don't know how I feel about that. Maybe it's not a good match with the concealer that I used, but it's done this to me now a couple of times. So I don't know how I feel about this. Right now, I would say that it's not really a hit for me. It looked beautiful on Patty, but it just is not looking beautiful on me. One that I do like that looks beautiful on me is the Laura Mercier. This is a new powder she came out with. It's not the newest one. They just launched one on Sephora, but this is a, I think, Laura Mercier exclusive website powder. This is called the Translucent Loose Setting Powder, the Tone Up Edition. I have the shade Rose. I think there is only one shade. This is a kind of pink toned powder. Now, I said how I liked the Jaclyn sifter. I do not like this sifter. It is so messy. It got everywhere. When I was dumping some out to apply it, it just made a mess and it got all over the desk. So I don't really like that. I wish that she would do better sifters. I feel like at this point, because of the luxuriousness of this brand and the price point, why don't we have a better sifter for it? But the powder itself applied stunning. It just went on so easy, so smooth. There was no tugging or pulling. If you see here, it did brighten much more compared to beforehand, and it actually balanced out well with the pinkness of the concealer. Um, it kind of somehow neutralized it just a little bit because my under eye does not look pink even though I used two pink products basically. So I really like this powder. I think it's pretty. I think that it's a nice brightening option. I felt a hair there. Oh, do you guys hate that feeling when you know there's a hair somewhere and you just gotta get it? Anyway, I like this powder. This is a hit for me and it is super blurring, super brightening. Just looks good. Moving on to the bronzers. I have two to share with you. I'm going to start with my NARS Laguna bronzer. This was limited edition. They brought it back. I'm really happy they did. I missed it the first time, and I'm really glad that I got it this time. This is the Laguna Original Bronzing Cream in the shade 02. It's a spin-off cap. It is a cream formula. It is a little deep for me. I feel like it's a bit deeper than the actual powder Laguna, 
but I somehow got it to work. I had to defuse it quite a bit because it was so like mm, in your face. It was too much. So it is very pigmented. I recommend going in carefully, very carefully because this is a pigment bomb. In the end though, I feel like it looks really pretty. I feel like I got a nice, even layer. I think it blended well. The color ended up working out as long as I go in carefully with it. So I enjoy this one. I think that this is a hit for me and I'm really glad that they brought it back. I don't know if it's a permanent bring back or not, but let's hope it is because I think a lot of people are loving this. It's a very kind of creamy, smooth, somewhat emollient formula. It's easy to maneuver on your skin, but it's not so emollient that it just blends away to nothing obviously it's pretty pigmented so this was a good release rose ink i love this brand this is another brand it's up there with the say and you know all the other brands i love um this is their cream bronzer in parrot k and i think the packaging is really cool it's bigger than i thought it would be um i got their highlighter which is smaller than this so i thought it was going to be like that or like their blushes but it is much bigger and I like that the color is on the label. I love that Rose Ink does that because when you're storing it, it's easy to see what color it is. And then this is how it looks in the pan. So this is a different, um, I have it on this side of my face. This is a different undertone than the Laguna and it's very emollient. This is so like, I don't even know how to explain it, you guys. It's so emollient, it almost blends away to nothing. So when I was applying it, I was kind of nervous. If you see, like, you can see it on my face, but during application, I was kind of nervous because it was sort of blending away. And then I realized I can build this up and it'll definitely leave more of a pigment. So I like how this looks. I feel like it's a more soft, subtle bronzer versus the Laguna, which is a bit more like chiseled and contoured and in your face. So for me personally, I would use the Parrot K shade every day and then I would go in with my Laguna when I kind of want to look more dolled up so I like it I think they're both equally as good though I will say that I like them both blush so many new blushes and I am a blush hoarder you guys I have a whole big drawer dedicated to blush because I just can't get enough of it so I used as many as I could on my cheeks today within reason, of course. I have three that I put on my cheeks and I'm gonna start with the first one. So this is a cream blush stick from Jaclyn. This is a cream to powder formula. I have the shade Overruled. It is really pretty, really simple. I like the packaging. I like the color. It's a bit of a deeper berry shade and I have it on this side of my face today. This is pretty, but it blends away to nothing. And so I don't really like that about it. I applied it with my fingers at first, which just wiped it away completely. And then I went in with a sponge and took some off the top and dabbed it on and then it put too much on. So I had to blend it out. And as I kept blending it out, it kept rubbing away to pretty much nothing. There was a slight tint to the cheek, but that was about it. So being that it's a deeper shade, I would think it would have a little bit more of a staying power or a little bit more of a stain to the cheek at least, but it didn't. So I think this is a flop for me. I really wanted to like this, but I have to be honest with myself. As pretty as the shade is, it doesn't make up for the application and the longevity, which is pretty much non-existent, and the pigment, which is pretty much also non-existent as you start blending it. So. I don't know, maybe there's a trick to this. If you guys have any advice or ideas, let me know in the comments. I will definitely keep it and keep playing with it. On this cheek, I went with a powder. I went with the new Tom Ford Cheek Duo in Eclat New. I believe these are limited edition, so I sort of feel bad talking about it, but it's available now, so you can definitely get it still. Um, this is what it looks like. It's a Cheek Duo. They are sort of a luminous, sheer consistency. They are a baked gelée formula. They are sort of a luminous blush, really pretty. You get like more of a pink tone and then more of an orangey nude tone. And I love how this looks. I actually use both colors together and I think it's stunning. I love how it applied. It just went on so nicely. It was easy to use. It was quick. 
It left great pigment. It looks natural. It's not too um, in your face, like luminous or any of that. It still looks like you're blushing. You know what I mean? So I like this product. The only downfall is it's expensive and obviously not everybody is in the position to get it. So I want to find a dupe for it because it is a really pretty formula and a really pretty shade. So I will keep you guys posted if I find a dupe for this or really any of like the high end stuff. I'll definitely do some dupe videos. And then to kind of top off the whole blush saga, I ended it all with Shelly from Benefit. These are beautiful new blushes that Benefit came out with. They have the shade description on top. They are a thinner box formula, so it's easy to, easier to get your brush in. They come in mini sizes. This is the only mini I have. I have some of the other shades in the full size, but this one is a mini, and I just thought this would be the nicest kind of color to wrap up the blush situation on my cheeks. So this is Shelly. This one is not a matte blush. I do not think so. Nope, it is definitely more of a kind of luminous blush. It's very subtle, but pigmented. And when you put it on, it just blends into your cheeks. It almost melts into your cheeks. Um, it is a very soft, buttery powder, and I like it. And I really love that I got all, almost all the colors because this is definitely a launch that I am enjoying. And it has a scent, just to let you know. It's a very subtle scent. It smells like a really light kind of floral, airy perfume. But you don't smell it when you apply it and you honestly don't even smell it when you're rubbing your brush in it or anything it's just in the pan and then it's gone as soon as you put it on let's talk highlighter so i tried a brand that i've never tried before and i also got the bronzer from this brand which is probably going to be in the next video of this but i got something from house labs this is lady gaga's brand i got the bio radiant gel powder highlighter in the shade sunstone this is a Babs Beauty recommendation, and this is what it looks like. Really, really pretty. It is super kind of blinding, but natural. I am wearing it on this side of my face, and you could see it's really pretty. It melts into your cheek. It is a lit from within formula without being a cream. I find that most of the time I need to use a cream highlighter because powder highlighters just sit on your cheek. They don't blend in. They can be kind of chunky. This one is nothing like that. I really think this is probably one of my favorite highlighter, powder highlighters this far in the makeup game, but that's a big claim. I mean, we'll see, but so far this is one that I'm really loving. It's definitely one of the best releases. And for a cream highlight, I got the Rose Ink Highlighter. They have a few shades of this, but I got the shade Brilliant and it is a refillable highlighter. It looks like this. I'm wearing it on this side of my face. Definitely a little bit less blinding than the Lady Gaga or the House Labs highlighter, but it still shows and it really worked its way into the skin, which I appreciate. This is a cream highlight and I use my finger to apply it and I just dab it in and it basically melts right in and it keeps its pigment and it looks natural. So I really enjoy this. I also love the rose ink blushes and the bronzer now. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that brand. To wrap up the face stuff, um, I use as an all over face powder to kind of seal everything in, I use the new Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Perfector in the shade Light. This product, I'll be honest, the marketing, a little bit confusing. The actual packaging and powder, a little bit confusing. There are three different things going on in here and they all can give a very different look if you don't know how to use it. So there's a lighter shimmery shade, there's a middle sort of highlighty, bronzy shade, a little bit sparkly, got some micro glitters in there. And then at the bottom looks like a matte, almost bronzer shade. And has instructed to do with this is to use the bronzer, cream bronzer that he came out with first, and then put this over the rest of your face to warm it all up in general to give it a warmth. So I used it all over my face. And I do think that it smoothed things out. It does seem to be very smoothing. I don't know if it really added color. I feel like it did give some warmth, but not a whole lot to the point where I really noticed it. Overall, I just don't like 
the concept, I guess. I like that the product worked. It did what it said it would do. It looks pretty, it blurs. It's a nice powder. Great formula, very smooth and very just, you know, pigment, all that, good formula. But the actual concept of it, I don't know if this is one I would just reach for. I feel like I would rather just go in with one of my hourglass finishing powders or grab one of my other pressed powders that also blurs. And I don't have to worry about it putting shimmer on my face or being too warm or not mixing well, you know. So I don't know. Jury is still out. But as of now, it's kind of like a mm, shadow. I only used one palette, but I did two different eye looks. If you can kind of tell, this one's a little more warm, rosy tone. That one's a little more like cool, neutrally. So I used the new Too Faced Born This Way Sunset Stripped Palette. And it has a mirror, and these are the colors. Really pretty color story. I used to have the original, and I didn't like it as much as this. It was kind of too boring, too flat, too many of the same colors. This one gives you much more of a variety. So you've got your cool tones, your warm, more deeper tones, and then your like smoky tones. I, I really appreciate that. I also think that this is going to work better on many more skin types, whereas the first one, you kind of had to be light or pale or whatever. This one, I think you can have a little bit of a deeper complexion and still use it. So I like it. I think it's pretty. The pigment is great. The blendability is great and all of the colors that I used, I basically used all of the colors from the, the first third of the palette, minus like these two shades here. I didn't use them, I didn't use that. Um, I basically went in with, I went in with this, this, that, that one, that one, that one, and this one. And I think that one a little bit. Um, oh, and I definitely went in with that one, duh. <laughs> so, I think it's a really nice palette. I think it's worth your money and it has a really nice aesthetic to it. All right, we're kind of closing in on the finale of this video. I have two last products to share with you. The first one is this Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Push Up Lashes. This is not a new formula, but it is a new color. This is the shade Dream Pop. And this is sort of a purpley, burgundy color. I don't know if you can see that. That's what the wand looks like. It's really cool the way that it's kind of flat, but diamond shaped, and it's got bristles on either edge, on both edges, but none in the, in the middle of the applicator. So I actually really like this applicator. I find it to be effective, and the color really shows. Um, I put on black eyeliner, so you probably can't tell right now, but in the try-on clip, you can really see the purple in it, which looks stunning. I think it ties in the whole theme I've got going, like a purple lip, purple-ish eye on this side at least. Um, so I think this is a nice mascara. I don't often do brows. I'm sort of getting more into it, but this is the Too Faced Fluff and Hold Laminating Brow Wax. This was a Morgan Turner recommendation. So it is a clear brow wax. It has a spoolie. When you put it on, it applies really simply. It grabs the hairs. It does a great job at making a fluffy brow. It keeps them down. It keeps them flat. Gives a nice shape. I think it really works. It is a little heavy when you first apply it, but once it dries down, you don't feel it. You can even touch your brows and you don't feel it. So I really like the lightweight aspect of it and I think it does a really nice job just shaping and holding your brow in place. Last thing I'm wearing is a lipstick. And oh my God, you guys, I think that this is the most exciting lipstick launch in a while. It's the Rare Beauty lipsticks. This is the shade Strong. These are matte lipsticks. This is the packaging. You push it in, it opens up, slide it out, and then up comes your color. I normally don't wear or buy deep lipstick shades like this, especially in the brown range because I don't look that good in brown lipsticks. But this lipstick, oof, it is so good. It applies so nicely. It has a nice kind of sharper edge at first and it comes with corresponding lip liners with the same name as the lipstick. Do you know how helpful that is? A lot of brands come out with liners that match the lipsticks almost exact or very, very close. They name them different though. So then I don't know if I'm really getting the right one. You know what I mean? I second guess it. This matches and that is just such an ease of shopping you know it's such a great like 
tactic to get people to really buy both because they know for sure that it is going to match. But I didn't get the liner. Maybe I will next time. I didn't find that I needed it though. I just used the pointier edge of the bullet and I just lined along and then filled it in. And then I dabbed off any excess and it has been staying put. I've been drinking some water. I've been talking for over an hour and it stays put. It doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't feel drying. It hasn't faded at all. Really nice lipstick. I need to get more shades. So I actually forgot to share with you the setting spray that I'm using. It's the Gucci Broom de Butte Glow Hydrating Mist. This is really expensive. It is almost unreasonable for a setting spray. And that kind of, mm, kind of makes it not worth it for me. It makes it kind of a miss in a sense because it is just a setting spray. However, it did give some glow. It did give some, you know, shine to the face, but it doesn't look oily or greasy. So I do appreciate that. I think this has been done before and in a less expensive bottle and brand. <laughs> so that's kind of my thoughts on that. The bottle is really pretty. It's very heavy. It looks like the lipsticks. It's just super stunning. It's very like solid, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's worth the price point. I'm just checking to make sure that I went through everything before I do my outro. I think we're good. All right. So that is going to be the end of this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that it was semi-informative. Was that English? I hope it was semi-informative. And I will see you guys in my next video. So please subscribe, comment, like, and I'll see you next time. Bye.